ECAT Concert Productions are sponsored by Doug King Builders Incorporated. ECAT would like to thank all sponsors for making coverage of all this year's concerts possible. My name is Douglas King. I've been a developer and builder since 1966. We've been building for over 55 years. Love what we do. Everything we built is something that I myself and my family would welcome to live in and we've been uh, successful and the people that have bought from us are glad that they've done business with us. It's been a good journey and uh, we have hopefully a lot more to finish before we uh, hang it up. Greetings and happy holidays everyone. Welcome to the Brockton Symphony Holiday Concert. It's their first since 2019. My name. My name is Phyllis Ellis, and I will be the MC this afternoon. <laughs> First, thank you to Oliver Ames High School for hosting us, and a huge thank you to our lead sponsor, Harbor One Bank. But before we start this wonderful concert, we have some housekeeping issues we would like to uh, bring out. First, please silence all your electronics. Secondly, if you need to leave the auditorium during the concert, please leave during selections. We want to be courteous to our orchestra and also to you. All right? Thank you very much. We appreciate your cooperation. At this time, we're going to welcome our concert master, Mr. Tony Morales. He's going to fine tune the orchestra. Tony? Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to our guest concert conductor, Mr. Philip Sanborn.
Good afternoon. <laughs> I got one of those music stands. Uh, my name is Phil Sanborn. I'm your guest conductor for this afternoon, and I am thrilled and fortunate to be in front of these wonderful musicians. Please give them a round of applause. They are super. They are the Brockton Symphony Orchestra. And uh, we have an extraordinary program for you this afternoon uh, with many, many talented guests. You'll, you'll hear them later. Um, this year we put together an, an eclectic collection of musical pieces that reflect the diversity of the greater Brockton community that we live in. Uh, the multifaceted talents of the area can be portrayed in a musical sense by visiting many different lands, many different musical styles, many different diverse composers, and fun arrangements, a lot of fun arrangements today. Well, you get the idea of where this program is structured, how this program is structured. We first visit somewhere that's close to the North Pole, but not quite the North Pole. Um, this is a piece called Taiga. Yes, that's how it's pronounced. You looked in the program, didn't know how to pronounce it, it's pronounced Taiga. And a taiga is a biome, uh, also known as a boreal forest or a snow forest. And it, and it's, it covers all of Alaska uh, and parts of, Canada, parts of northern Canada, parts of the northern continental United States, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Russia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and northern Japan's huge area. Uh, it takes the, this piece takes the listener into that area through the beautiful landscapes, stormy weather, you'll hear some stormy weather in there, uh, and, and the, simply the miracles of the northern wilderness. Uh, one can also hear the scene of a loon in the oboe, so listen for that, as the loon imitates an oboe in uh, a piece written by a young Finnish composer, and it's entitled Taiga.
Did you like that one? Yeah. It's a pretty cool piece because it, it really features all the different colors in the orchestra. Uh, and it's modern. It's definitely modern. Now we're going to come back to the United States and we're going to take a walk along Main Street. See all the holiday decorations and preparations for the festive season. We would like to now play a spirited arrangement of well-known Yuletide favorites. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, Silver Bells, and the Christmas song. Now, if you would like to sing along, please don't, okay? <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be a chance for that later in the program, okay? But, but listen to this. It's a really nice arrangement that's called simply Christmas Favorites.
Now we're going to start to invite some of those talented guests I talked about onto the stage. Um, we would like to visit Harlem and Upper Manhattan to pay tribute to three African-American jazz composers with an arrangement called Legends, with an arrangement called Legends of Jazz. Miles Davis, Thelonious Monk, and Duke Ellington were not only innovators, superb improvisers in their own rights as musicians, but they were also prolific composers setting new trends in the jazz vernacular. Today, we're lucky enough to have the dynamic Marcus Montero with us. Marcus has traveled the world playing alto saxophone with some of the leading jazz and funk bands on the planet. And I'm not kidding when I say that. Just this fall, I texted him to discuss playing with the Brockton Symphony. And he replied that he had just landed in Jakarta, Indonesia, and that he would get back to me when he had a free moment. Okay, so this guy gets around. And uh, he's an awesome player, awesome individual. If you can, in the program book, please read his biography, because I could sit up here for 20 minutes and read it to you. You'd be awestruck. But he is a wonderful. Uh, we are super fortunate to have a current legend of jazz here to pay tribute to Miles, Thelonious, and Duke in an arrangement called Legends of Jazz. Please welcome Marcus Monterey.
Marcus Montero, ladies and gentlemen, Marcus Montero. Now we invite another guest up, the Ubalati Chorus, with conductor Murray Kidd. And we travel to Venice. We actually travel back to the 18th century. Baroque period of music, where we find the virtuoso violinist and master composer Antonio Vivaldi. His Gloria for Chorus and Orchestra was written while he was maestro di violino at an orphanage in Venice, a job he held for over 30 years. Today we will perform three movements from this master work, and the Jubilate, the Jubilate Chorus, one of Greater Brockton's musical jewels, under the direction of Murray Kidd since it has, has, was established in 1977 and has been lifting spirits of audiences with concerts in December and May. They just had their concert in December concert two weeks ago. Okay, and, and we're looking forward to one in May. Is that right, Murray? Yeah. Okay. And so uh, check uh, their website and other info to, to find that. So we're very pleased and excited to have them here. Uh, we will perform now uh, three movements from Gloria by Antonio Vivaldi. Thank you. 
We're going to take a short break from the concert while we introduce Ms. Carol Prone, representing the Prone Family Foundation. Carol, where are you? Oh, there you are. <laughs> the Prone Family Foundation is the new sponsor of our youth competition, which was held this past November. Welcome, Carol. And she's going to announce this year's winners. Hi, the Crown Family Foundation is proud to sponsor the Brockton Symphony Youth um, Competition. And there are three very talented winners. So the first place winner, I hope I pronounce all these names right, is Caleb Grappera. Can I have a um, couple of hands for Caleb, wherever he is? Okay, the second place winner um, is Hayden Wren. Is Hayden here? Okay, and the third place winner is Ayan Ahmad. Thank you, Carol, and we thank the Prone Family Foundation, and congratulations to all the winners. Let's give them another hand. Thank you, guys. And now we're going to welcome back Mr. Philip Sanborn. Our last stop was in Venice. Now we're going to go to a town you may be familiar with, Boston, Massachusetts, and in particular, Boston Symphony Hall, where we find composer Leroy Anderson and conductor Arthur Fiedler. Anderson originally wrote the orchestral piece, Sleigh Ride, during a heat wave in the summer of 1946. That's a true story. Arthur Fiedler and the Boston Pops Orchestra premiered it in Symphony Hall in 1948. And since then, it has become iconic, a classic. As a matter of fact, you can't do a holiday concert without playing Sleigh Ride. So without further ado, Leroy Anderson's Sleigh Ride.
My holidays are now complete. I love sleigh ride. Uh, but I love this next piece as well. Um, we go from Boston Symphony Hall to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Michigan, of all places. And we find a young boy named Billy. He's growing skeptical about the existence of Santa Claus. A train stops in front of his house. Yes, a train stops. He doesn't live by railroad tracks, but a train stops in front of his house, and the conductor says they are traveling to the North Pole. The boy, although reluctant at first, climbs aboard, and the rest is history. The Polar Express is a 2004 computer animated fantasy adventure film based on the children's book of the same name by Chris Van Allsburg. The music, and it has some awesome music, was written by Glenn Ballard and Alan Silvestri. Please enjoy the last piece before we take a short intermission, the Polar Express Concert Suite.
our hand. We're all going to take a brief intermission for about 20 minutes, but while you're out there stretching your legs and everything else, we have a lot of fundraising ideas out there. We have the 50-50 raffle. If you have already, if you have not already purchased a ticket, please do so. We will announce the winner after the intermission. We also have a silent auction going on, so please check out the items on the table, make your bid. We will announce that later on in the program as well. And last but not least, please, if you like what you're hearing today, please donate to us. Thank you. I'll see you in about 20 minutes. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you all are enjoying this concert as much as I am. I have a few. <laughs> oh, thank you. I have a few announcements. Um, there were a couple of items that were lost. We have a lost wallet that was um, found before the concert started, and there's also a piece of jewelry. So if you are missing any of these items, you can collect them after the concert in the lobby. Just look for someone wearing a symphony tag to claim your item. Okay. And the other announcements we have is we were post announcing the winners of today's silent auction in three places. At the entrance of the auditorium, at the auditorium exit closest to the cafe, and at the cafe. Please pick up your silent auction items in the lobby immediately following today's concert. And if you notice in your program book, there's a survey. Please take a moment to fill that out because we would love your feedback as we search for our new music director. Please drop your survey in the basket in the lobby in the cafe. And lastly, we are having a reception at the end of this concert. So please join us in the cafe to mingle with the orchestra and everyone who associated today. So thank you very much. That is the end of my announcement. And now we're going to welcome back Mr. Philip Sanborn. Did you enjoy the first half? I think you're going to like the second half even better, because we've got some surprises for you. But isn't this orchestra fantastic? Aren't they perfect? Uh, in an effort to celebrate the holiday season, um, we'd like to uh, play the next lecture. Actually, today at sundown, and I think it is sundown now, is the beginning of Hanukkah, or the Festival of Lights. Uh, it's an eight-day period of meditation uh, on the miracle of Hanukkah, uh, where there was a, uh, a small jug of oil that they thought was going to light a lamp for one day, and miraculously, it lit it for eight days. Um, and this tradition is over 2,000 years old, um, and they light a candle every sundown for eight sundowns in a row. We're going to play uh, a collection of Hanukkah songs called Hanukkah Festival Menthe.
Now, we travel to the Ukraine. Although currently in battle in a major geopolitical struggle, it was once the setting of a wonderfully compelling bell carol. I'm sure you've all heard it. The Ukrainian bell carol, or carol of bells, has become a popular Christmas carol with music by Ukrainian composer Mykola Leontovich, and it was composed in 1914. The song is based on the Ukrainian folk uh, chant, Shedrik. It has a four-note ostinato, or um, continuous pattern of notes, that is virtually mesmerizing. We would like to do a few twists and turns to that ostinato and play a pretty cool arrangement by Ad, uh, Andrew Wainwright. Please enjoy Ukrainian bell carol. That was a pretty cool arrangement, wasn't it? We're going to bring the Yuba Latte Corral back up. We're going to sample some more of their vast repertoire. Um, this piece is actually pure fun. It is a, um, a combination. It melts two holiday favorites together, uh, Winter Wonderland and Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow. By the way, there are exclamation points after each one of those. And he calls this Winter Wonderland of Snow. So please welcome back Murray Kidd and the Yuba Latte Corral.
We now go from a winter wonderland to a wonderful world, recorded by many artists, but probably most well known as recorded by the trumpeter and singer Louis Armstrong. What a Wonderful World has become an often visited page in the great American songbook. We invite back saxophonist par excellence, Marcus Montero, to perform Jerry Seco's arrangement of this iconic standard, What a Wonderful World. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Marcus Montero, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's time to choose the 50-50 raffle winner. So get your tickets ready. To assist me would be Megan and her elves. Megan, where are you? <laughs> Hi. No more elves, just you? They ran away. Terrible. Okay, we're going to choose. The winner will get... The winner will be getting... $421. Really good. Drum roll. Can't get it. The winner is me. <laughs> I'm kidding. The winner, Meg. <laughs> Three, five, nine, zero, nine, zero, eight. Again? Three, five, nine, zero, nine, zero, eight. We have a winner. Oh. <laughs> Come on down. I need to get some information from you, and then we'll get you all settled. That is awesome. Thank you, Megan. How much was it again? Four hundred twenty-one dollars. That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> and now we're going to turn it back to the fabulous Philip Sanborn. Okay, let the games begin. We have one of the most amazing, energetic, intelligent, sophisticated, and absolutely funny men I've ever met. And I only met him just recently. And I'm sorry that I haven't met him years ago. Um, but our next guest is going to narrate something, and his name is Willie Wilson. An amazing man. You guys know Willie? He's a product of the Brockton Public Schools. He, he uh, went to school there. He went on to teach at all levels in the Brockton Public School System. He's an a historian, okay, with special emphasis on telling stories of black, indigenous, people of color. In 2019, Willie Wilson received an official citation from the Massachusetts State Senate in honor of being chosen as community leader by the Massachusetts Black and Latino Legislative Caucus during its celebration of Black History Month. He also received the 2019 Black Excellence on the Hill Award from the Massachusetts House of Representatives. In September 2018, Wilson received the Certificate of Appreciation from the Plymouth County District Attorney's Office for his presentation on the history and significance of Brockton's Liberty Tree. Please welcome Brockton's own Willie Wilson. Uh, Willie, before we get started, I just want to warm you up a little bit, see, you know, get, get you limber. Um, since you're, you are a noted historian, um, I would like to do a little bit of uh, history trivia with you. Are you up for that? Okay. Is his microphone up for that by any chance? Yeah. I hope so. Okay. Uh, first trivia question, don't shout out the answers, okay? First trivia question is, what musical organization was founded in Brockton in 1948. The Brockton Symphony. Brockton Symphony, give them a round of applause. <laughs> the one for one. They're not all gonna be that easy, will they? Okay. What city holds the Guinness Book of World Records 
record for most Santa caps worn at the same time in year 2010 and 2011. Brockton, Massachusetts. Brockton, Massachusetts. <laughs> Last question, let's see if Willie gets this one. Who was James Edgar? James Edgar was the first national department store Santa Claus, and he was the founder of Edgar's Department Store in downtown Brockton. You are three for three, Willie. Okay. Now, Willie, did we set this up ahead of time? No, no, you wouldn't. So, you wouldn't do it. I know. <laughs> I didn't know what you were going to ask. He, he asked me, can I get the answers? Can I get the answers? I said, no. Nope. <laughs> nope. So that was awesome, Willie. Now, we're going to do that famous poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas. was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while the visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. kerchief and I and my cat had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to the objects below, when what to my wondering eyes did appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. eagles, their courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner, on Blitzen. the wild hurricane fly, 
When they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the courses they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof as I drew in my head and was turning around down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed in all fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back. And he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow. And the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth. And the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly. that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team, gave a whistle. And away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all. And to all, a good night.
Another round of applause for Willie Wilson, please. Mr. Willie Wilson. And now, just when you thought it couldn't get better, it makes me wonder when I see Willie, a product of the Broadton Public Schools, um, and growing up and doing what he's done, and he's done a lot of things. Read his bio in the program book. It, it's amazing. Uh, it makes me wonder what else goes on in the Brockton Public Schools. Well, we're going to find out right now, because the Pluff Middle School, under the direction of Helen Levitt, is going to come up right now. And they can come on up right now. And they're going to sing a really pretty nice arrangement of a brand new song. It's called, it's called It Feels New, a winter song. So give them a round of applause while they're in here.
And now, it's time for all of you to get in the holiday spirit. That's right, you guys out there. Thought you were getting by easy, didn't you? Um, we would like you to lift your voices in the, get in the holiday spirit with our Christmas sing-along. And the lyrics should be in your program. Okay? So if um, you look in your program book, you should have lyrics. Of course, we have the Pluff Chorus, and we're inviting back the Yubilate Chorale as they assemble on stage. And we'll, we'll have the triple threat conducting. We're going to have Helen Levin conducting you guys, so follow her, okay? We have Murray Kidd conducting the combined chorus, and I'll try to conduct the orchestra, okay? So sing along to the Christmas sing-along.
I am sad to say that we're getting ready to perform the last selection on today's program. I've had so much fun, and I hope you have too. I wanted to thank our guests, Marcus Montero. Give Marcus a round of applause for everyone here. The Yuba Latte Corral, give them a round of applause. Mr. Willie Wilson. And the Pluff Chorus. I would also like to thank all the people behind the scenes who make this production possible. Make the auditorium beautiful, uh, make the musicians happy. Uh, and uh, that would be a very long list to read, but in particular, um, there are uh, four people uh, that I want to uh, point out. Uh, Susan Kaplan, uh, so give Susan a round of applause. Our fantastic librarian, Karen Grant. Our super personnel manager, Cassie Silberen. And the person who makes the show run, Emily Dunbar. And there is uh, one person left on that list, and that's Tony, our concertmaster. Give it up for Tony. Please check out your program books and the Brockton Symphony website for upcoming concerts in the new year. Uh, there is music all the time in Brockton. There will be a reception in the cafe following the concert. If you'd like to meet Marcus and Willie and uh, Murray Kidd and Helen Levitt, they'll all be there. I think I might Stop by for a while, too. And uh, now we're going to play the last song on the concert because it is a wonderful time of the year. This is A Most Wonderful Christmas.
ECAT Concert Productions are sponsored by Doug King Builders Incorporated. ECAT would like to thank all sponsors for making coverage of all this year's concerts possible. My name is Douglas King. I've been a developer and builder since 1966. We've been building for over 55 years. Love what we do. Everything we built is something that I myself and my family would welcome to live in and we've been uh, successful and the people that have bought from us are glad that they've done business with us. It's been a good journey and uh, we have hopefully a lot more to finish before we uh, hang it up. <laughs>